We have a fury of flares popping off the sun like camera bulbs flashing at a red carpet event. And an enormous filament, easily 50 times the size of the Earth, gets shredded by the power of the sun. Those stories and more in the news this week. Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove. The sun's activity has just gone up like gangbusters this week. We have region 2422 that started firing off M-class flares back right around the 27th, and we were stu soon realized that it was magnetically connected to region 2423 over here. They started trading off pot shots like nobody's business, and we've been watching this other filament that we expected to erupt, and it was just hanging on and hanging on, and 2423 took care of that puppy. It just ripped it apart. If you can see right here, it shredded it and annihilated the thing, and it just kind of hung out in the sun's atmosphere for a little while before it finally erupted on the 30th. What a spectacular show. Switching to your M flare threat meter, you can see things were pretty quiet up until about the 27th. That's when region 2422 and 2423 really started upping the ante. And we've had since then way over a dozen M class flares. As a matter of fact, for a little while, we had the background levels hovering at an M flare threat level. It was unbelievable. And since then, things have quieted down just a smidge. We're hovering now around a, a C5 level, which is still really noisy for you amateur radio operators but at least we're kind of coming down a little bit. But we keep popping back up. And even though Region 2423 has now rotated around the backside, 2422 is still firing these things in Earth view, and we will continue to see this noise and have issues with the ham radio bands until Region 2423 rotates out of sight. Switching to your solar storm conditions, as you can see, we've actually been very quiet over the past week. There hasn't been much in the way of solar storms or high-speed winds, so we're experiencing some of the quietest conditions we've had for quite a while. Now, this is going to pick up here now, uh, starting about now and in through tomorrow because one of those wispy solar storms that, that the region 2422 has launched is actually hitting us right about now. I'm not anticipating too much, but then we have that huge solar storm that was launched uh, on the west limb. That actually might reach us here uh, around the 3rd or the 4th, so we might start seeing some uh, aurora and possibilities of great storming conditions at that time. Now, focusing on that coming solar storm I keep talking about, this is our prediction model, Enlil. This is NOAA's version of the model, top panel's density, bottom panel's velocity. And you can see that solar storm, even though it was launched way to the west of us, it's so incredibly large that it's actually going to impact Earth. And it came out in two kind of sections, so it's kind of a one-two punch here, and then it's also butting up against a high-speed uh, wind, so it's almost like a one-two-three punch. So we actually expect to get some effect from this starting around the well, into the second, into the third, and then of course into the fourth is when the real storm hits. So we might have a really good chance for aurora here in the coming days. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see is region, old region 2414. That region has gotten a little bit of activity, but not too, too much. That is now going to be rotating into Earth view here momentarily. But outside of that, you've got this big kind of a dead zone. So basically for the next week, after that region rotates into Earth view, we probably will take a little bit of a rest. And then we'll start seeing all of that other activity that's just kind of left the Earth view, that will be rotating back into view uh, starting in about eh, maybe 8 or 10 days or so. And if you're wondering why region 2422 is so incredibly active, here's a hint. These are magnetic field diagrams that show which direction the magnetic field is pointing inside the region. Red is pointing one direction, blue is pointing another direction, it doesn't really matter which way. What matters is the fact that you have different directions so close together. So when you see red and blue really close together, that's bad. And so you actually can see there are multiple clusters in this region right there. All of this mixing, we call it magnetic mixing, makes this region incredibly unstable. And so not only is it still an M-class player, it is an X-class player. So we really have to pay attention to this thing as it continues to rotate in Earth view. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that glancing blow from that monstrous solar storm that's on its way. And NOAA is expecting at high latitudes to have minor storm conditions with about a 65% chance of a major storm at high latitudes. Now at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 15-20% to 20 chance of a minor storm. But then we do have that high-speed stream that will probably up the ante just a little bit and make the storm last a little bit longer 
longer than we anticipated, both hitting maybe earlier and lasting longer. So we are expecting to have some good aurora possibilities over this coming week, and you ham radio operators expect the bands to kind of degrade starting about now. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, as if that coming solar storm isn't bad enough for you amateur radio operators, we also have region 2422 to contend with, and it is still popping off M flares right and left. So uh, NOAA is giving us about a 70% chance of an M class flare over the coming week, as well as a 25% chance for an X class flare. Now region 2422 should be rotating off the west limb here in the next day or so, maybe two days, and then what we'll We'll have to deal with is not so much X-class flares, but rather the particle radiation storms. Now we are in an elevated level of particle radiation storm right now that should be dying down over the next couple days. We might see a bump up when we hit that solar storm on the third or so, but then things should die off completely unless of course we get yet another proton storm launch. So this week has turned out to be incredibly exciting. We've had two magnetically linked players on the sun that have been firing M-class flare after M-class flare. And even though one of them has now rotated out of view, we still have that other player to contend with, and it's still delivering M-class flares. And this will continue probably for the next three, maybe even four days, until that region is fully out of view. So you amateur radio operators are going to have problems with the bands. Uh, the propagation probably will be much better on the night side than on the day side. Uh, and so you know, just wait till the sun goes down. And then you uh, GPS drone operators and UAV pilots and precision farmers, again, you may have issues with satellite lock, especially near the terminators. If it's kind of sunrise, sunset, that type of thing, you could have more issues there. So you have to be a little bit careful and just know that, you know, things are going to be tough for the next few days. So on top of all this, we now have that coming solar storm that's going to give us a glancing blow right around the second and in through the fourth. So that's going to add insult to injury for the GPS operators and the ham radio bands, but it will make the Aurora photographers happy. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.